Hey everyone, welcome back to The Tune Project. Today we're talking all about hooked bowing, what it is and how you can benefit from it in your learning. And before we jump in, if you enjoy this video and find it to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're here for the first time or just watching and not yet subscribed, I invite you to hit that red subscribe button below. And I post here twice a week, every week, videos just like this one. So if you hit the notification bell, you'll also be notified every time I post a new upload. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term hooked bowing, you may be more familiar with one of its other terms, portato and broken slurs. So what we're doing here is we're playing two notes in the same bow, but with a slight separation between them. So to give you an example, I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of Minuet Three from Suzuki Book One, because we have hooked bowings all throughout this piece. <laughs> So there we had hooked bowings on the G note. So as you could probably tell, I was playing two of the same note in the same bow direction, but again, with a slight separation in between them. So hooked bowings don't have to always be on the same note, although they can be, as long as they're both in the same bow direction with that slight separation, it is considered a hooked bowing. So one way to practice this technique is simply by playing a scale. So we're gonna go ahead and start by playing two of each note going up the A string in the same bow direction, starting with an open A on a down bow. One, two, three, four. All right, so that's just an example of one way that you could practice this. Obviously, you could go all the way up to the E string or play a completely different scale. That's totally up to you, but that's just a little example of how you might start to incorporate it into something that you already know. Now, another way that you can incorporate the hooked bowing into your practicing is by playing pieces and tunes that you already know, but with this technique. And chances are you might already be playing something that includes this hooked bowing. So I just gave the example earlier of Minuet 3 from book one, but there are several other examples where this hooked bowing is utilized. So I would encourage you to maybe take a peruse through your repertoire and see if there are any hooked bowings in there that you have been playing, but maybe didn't really understand the concept or know what it was called. Another way that you can practice hooked bowings is by playing on two different strings. So not only does this help us with our hooked bowing technique, but also with our string crossings. And this is a little bit challenging if you are not used to playing slurs going across two different strings, but hopefully with the hooked bowing, having that little bit of a pause in between, that'll be helpful in sort of giving you that clarity with our string transitions. So to give you an example, here, I'm going to start on my open A on a down bow and then I'm going to hook that bow to the D string and then we're going to do the same thing going up the A major scale. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that's a way that you could also start to incorporate this idea of the hooked bowing, but while also practicing string crossings and your scales as well. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is when we are practicing our hooked bowings, we wanna make sure that we're changing notes at the midpoint. So if you're starting at the frog and ending at the tip of the bow, we wanna make sure that we're changing notes at the midpoint. That's very important just to make sure that we're getting equal distribution of our bow and of our notes so just keep that in mind as you're working on this one well thanks so much for watching this video and learning about the hooked bowing I hope you guys enjoyed learning about that technique and I look forward to seeing you in the next video happy practicing
If you'd like to further your support of The Tune Project, be sure to head over to patreon.com slash The Tune Project for information on that. And if you're planning on buying any music or doing any shopping on Amazon, be sure to head over to The Tune Project website, which I linked in the description box of all of my videos. Click my Amazon banner and whatever you purchase, a small percentage of that will go toward The Tune Project. This just keeps The Tune Project going and allows me to continue to create free content for you all.